All right, we've got two final games to go ahead and make some predictions around. Let's talk about some uh, Challenge Cup familiarity. We've got an OL Reign versus Angel City. And the last time these two teams played each other was in the Challenge Cup, and it was a 0-0 draw. And maybe for some people the beginning of some concern over the rain and, and their performances uh, in, in the, you know, the, across all competitions. So is, is this a game where OL rain finds themselves back in the win column? Is this the game where angel city continues to be kind of a little bit of surprise? I don't know if look, listen, I've got, yeah. there's some streaky teams right now yeah. in the league, Lisa. And if uh, maybe Houston and angel city are two of those streaky teams for me there, it's tough to, to pluck out and see what's going, you know, what's going to happen. Um, another team, another team that is, is trying to, you know, um, embrace the return of, of some players when they're ready. Sydney LaRue, constantly giving us the updates you know and and i think people are just sort of wait you know waiting and, 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 he is so ready to hit the and they're all anticipating like how how badly do we all want to see the return of sydney the route oh, to the kid? um so you know is this the week that we see it and you know what type of minutes does it look like i i don't know um and no will rain you know is is this going to be the week where they figure things out get a goal in the back of the net put together an, a, a good a, a solid 90 minute performance pick up the win do you have do you have this one as a as a winner or a loser in this game yeah so I think this one kind of comes down to availability and of course we don't have that we, we go Thursday morning with these previews um, which puts us out there on a limb a little bit but we just have to run with it because this game is in Seattle hosted by OL rain rain coming off back-to-back -back losses the first time that they've done that since 2021 Um and they're not happy about it. Laura Harvey's not happy about it. Megan Rapinoe's not happy about it. Fallon Tellish Choice isn't happy about it. The team is not happy. They're on shaky waters right now. And it's really hard to see that because they've had a great season up until these last two games. And I think any other team we would look at and say it's fine. They've, they've hit a two-game slump, right? Portland did it. San Diego did it. And they're all back on track. But there's something about this OL Reign side that makes me a little bit nervous. Makes me a little bit nervous. They've struggled to score goals. We saw that last year. We saw it at the very start of this year. They're putting up 15 shots a game. 10 of them are on goal, but they're not finding the back of the net, or only one of them are. So their shot selection is something that has fallen to be a bit tricky. Now, on the other side of things, Angel City... They're coming off a 0-0 draw to North Carolina. We did not see Julie Ertz in that game. Alyssa Thompson did not start that match as well. Yeah. I think if we see Julie Ertz start and get 90 against Joel Rain, if we see Alyssa Thompson start, it's Angel City's game. And Angel City gets the win over OL Rain. Now, there's another factor we have to talk about. I mean, Challenge Cup, we can look at a 0-0 draw, 2 nothing to Rain, um, so this is the first time they're playing each other in the regular season. I don't think that matters too much. But I think we have to a a assess and talk about the elephant in the room, Sandra. For right. OL Reign and Rose Lavelle. We have not seen her play for OL Reign since this April friendlies. She's been out with a an injury. And we finally heard from Laura Harvey um, what is up with, with Rose Lavelle if we're going to see her. And we're not going to see her this week. She's been dealing with a bit of injuries. Harvey saying that she was back on track, back ready to go. Uh, she faced a little bit of a setback. And so we don't think we're going to see her again. Making making sure the priority is the World Cup. And I think that's a big factor for O.L. Reid in the regular season, that they don't have Rose Lavelle and they're not going to have her this game. Yeah, I, I, look, I think um, we're less than two months out from the world cup and there has been an emphasis on the importance of, of, of club cup, excuse me, for club play for players. But I think there's also been an emphasis for two groups of players, right? We heard that coming out of that final April international window that the U S coaching staff is going to task certain players to go back to their club and just say, Hey, keep doing what you're doing work and keep and maintain your form as best you can and stay ready. And there's this, another group of players that they're going to say, we need to see a B C and X, Y, and Z from you in order for you to have a shot at this final world cup roster. 
I don't think Roosevelt was one of those players. I think Roosevelt. No, was yeah. Part of, yeah, Roosevelt was Rose part of that. Going players. to the World Cup, it's just yeah. a matter of health. Roosevelt is one of those players who was just like, hey, you know, get back to your club and, and take and take care of things. And um, you know, shout out to Bella uh, to, to to Bella Munson who who got these quotes and, and went to training and and, up, and updated got this update on on Lavelle. So you know, I, anytime we've seen Lavelle listed as unavailable uh, for OL Reign over the course of this regular season, it's just been listed as leg. Right. So right, I think right. like it's it's not it's not like it doesn't say knee, it doesn't say left to right knee, it doesn't say left to right. It just says it says leg. Right. So I think there's a lot of, for a lot of people, there's a lot of curiosity around it. Like, what's the update? And then if you don't see this player playing on the pitch for club, it's it's a uh, it feels devastating. Right. And as you see that club team kind of go on a little bit of a, a skid or hit a little bit of a snag and slump. It feels even more devastating. It's like you know who can probably unlock some things here for Oren? Probably a player like Rose. Yeah, Rose. No kidding, she's a very high quality uh, player. But I don't know if there are players who are going to feature in this game with the World Cup in front of them. I don't know how much how many minutes we're going to see from Julie Ertz for Angel City. She was a she was listed as uh, uh, off the bench for yeah. Angel City in their previous match, but there was enough there for them to sort of squeak out a draw. So they didn't, they didn't test those waters to, to push her any further um, in that kind of match. And I don't anticipate that, you know, we're going to see Lavelle come off this week, especially with this recent update that we got from Laura Harvey. I think that uh, for some players in this league that there are bigger fish uh, to, to fry at this moment. And there are going to be people who don't, like that because there are some folks out there who are just fans of club play and fans of NWSL yeah. and don't care anything about the national team. But the the unfortunately, like that's the that's a big fact. The matter here. is that's what these players there's, care about. There's there's, there's a big there's, care about. that's a big factor moving forward. And listen, Laura Harvey is a coach who pretty much understands that. This is someone right. who has spent significant time with the national team understands the the importance and value of players to how they fit into certain things and um i just you know not having lavelle has maybe you know hindered some things for all rain but i you know i would also argue that not having quinn available yeah. on this roster for ol rain is of equal significance i think again there's a lot of attention and lens and focal on lavelle but they were you know they've been without quinn for an extended period of time. We don't have an update on them at this moment either. So I don't, I think that that's also equal uh, cause for equal ringing of the alarm. Um, you know, they were without Olivia Vandergott for a, a couple of, of matches and some excused absences there. That is another player who is, is showing a lot of promise and talent in under Laura Harvey and within her system on this club, a player that can also change things for them. So while, yeah, I get that there's a lot of emphasis and, and focal focus on Roosevelt. Let's not kid ourselves here. Oral Reign is an incredibly deep squad. They have enough. They should be getting results. They should go out and look at it. The, they should look at a match like this against Angel City and say, hey, this is a match that we can go out there and win. So, um, yeah, it's an elephant in the room, but I think there's also some, you know, there's some answers there that I don't think, I think there are answers there that people don't like, and yeah, that's why they're not kind of like referring to that. But uh, I think when it comes to, to these two teams, I think one team is going to figure it out against the other. And I think it's going to be all rain. Not only do I think Ooh. they have the deeper squad, even with some of the injuries, I think it's going to come down to a head coaching battle and yeah. how the substitutions come into play. And I think Laura Harvey has that edge over Freya Coom. So I'm going rain. They're going to get their mojo back with a win against Angel City. I hope they do. I hope they do. But I'm, I'm sticking with Angel City. I think Angel City is going to get the win. I agree if it's a coaching battle, Laura Harvey might out coach. But um, I think if Alyssa Thompson gets the start, she'll help. Angel City a lot. Hey, I would I would love yep. to see it. I would love to see it. We got one more game to make a pick before we leave you all for the weekend. Let's talk about racing Louisville FC versus North Carolina. We got a couple of undefeated teams going head to head here. We've got a couple teams who are trying to ring the bell and say, Hey, don't forget about us here. We're we're gonna be contenders too. I love it. I'm excited to see these two teams go head to head racing coming off of some wins here off of some spectacular individual play 
out of Savannah DeMello, North Carolina Courage. One yes. of those teams that just so you sort of look at their playing and you get reminded like, oh, okay, when you have a system in place and players are bought in and, and they're executing the tactics, things will work out and you'll be okay. And uh, it's kind of cool to see North Carolina Courage, a team that has, you know, tr tried to go through some retooling and some rebuilding and kind of finding this early success. It's uh, it's cool to sort of see this out of, of, of of the courage and also the pride that maybe they're a little bit ahead of schedule, um, you know, in terms of turning things around uh, in within their season. So when it comes to these two teams, do you think it's it, my thing with, with racing Louisville, Lisa, and I'm going to ask you about this. There's been some spectacular play from Savannah DeMello to the point where you've got her veteran teammates just yeah. tweeting it off her, Abby Ursa giving her a shout out on Twitter, just Savannah DeMello. That's it. Right. Is it sustainable? Does this player have another, like another breakout standout game against a North Carolina Courage side that is going to work very hard to keep the ball? I think it's going to be tough. I think this game is going to be really tough for Racing Louisville to play the type of game they want to do. I think Savannah DeMello is going to have to work her little tail off defensively. We're going to see more work from Savannah DeMello defensively in this game against North Carolina than we've seen from DeMello in the last three games, just because those games have not asked that of her. However, yes, I think she can do it. Savannah DeMello has been tremendous, tremendous, because she knows how to work off the ball. She knows how to play the game of soccer without having the ball and having to chase and having to defend and then to capitalize on moments when she does have the ball. Yes, I think that Savannah DeMello can continue to do it. I mean, back-to-back -back wins for Racing Louisville at this point, uh, their first two wins of the season, and it is thanks to Savannah DeMello. She had to sit out a game. Three games ago, she sat out, and I don't think she ever wants to do that again, and she's going to take every single game, uh, not take a single game for granted, and she's going to play like it is her last game every time out there, and that's why I think it's sustainable because she had it taken away from her. And she saw what it was like to not be able to play, to sit yep. on the bench. And she doesn't like that. So, yes, that's why I think it is sustainable. Now, North Carolina, there are four games undefeated. Um, coming off a draw to Angel City, back-to-back -back shutouts, though, against O.L. Reign and Angel City. But they've only scored one goal in their last two games. So their offense is something that struggles to get going. They keep the ball, number one possession team in the league. So it's got to be a lot of chasing from racing Louisville. But Louisville can find the back of the net. I think we're, we're waiting to see some more things from Kanu up top. I think Savannah DeMello and Jalen Howell in the midfield have been tremendous together. Paige Monahan comes on and makes yeah. a show of herself. I'm going with racing Louisville in this one. I don't think the DeMello train is slowing down anytime soon. I'm with you on that 100%. But I think the footage is out on DeMello. I think at this point, if you're the opposition going into a match against racing, you've got the scouting report against totally. this team. And I think if you're the courage, you've got some midfielders that could, you could probably task with the responsibility of isolating a player like that. So that's not to say that racing doesn't have other good pieces to try to make sure that they pull off a result in this one. But I'm with you on the courage and their lack of goal scoring. I That's like the final piece I think that's missing for me and this team. I like their patience on the ball. I like their possession of it and how they look when they're on it. Casey Murphy looking strong in goal. I think Katie Lynn on the other side, yeah. we're looking at her and – could come down to a goalkeeper battle. Maybe we're going to see another, some more continuity here with North Carolina where they struggle to, to go ahead and, and, and get those goals in a match like this. So maybe it's narrow, you know, uh, even if they get a lot of shots off, I think London, the other side is going to go ahead and, and try to bat some things away. We've seen her come up with some pretty spectacular saves. So I had, I don't think I've had one at this point in the episode. And I you think I saved it. it for, I think I saved it for this game to close it out. I got this one as a draw and I think it'll be narrow as well. Oh, I like that a lot. I like that. You're saving your draw for the end. Louisville, North Carolina. I mean, I respect it. Frankly, I do racing Louisville, the host in this one, um, North Carolina, they're on a good run. This will be a good game. We're closing out the episode with I a really it. good yeah. game. There's something about those those middle of the pack teams, right? Totally. They kind of give you some some meat. You got and everything to play for, nothing to lose at this point.
you like it. I love it. Hopefully, week nine treats us to some lovely soccer in the NWSL. I know we'll be tuning in. Make sure you all tune in as well. You can catch all the matches on Paramount Plus and Golasso Network. Make sure you tune on in when you can.